after she had become identified as the chocolate smeared young woman by two conservative newspaper columnists. Um, she became identified as the chocolate smeared young woman and Franklin Furness, the kitchen, highways, the alternative spaces uh, that were showing art that took sexuality as a legitimate subject, which of course it has been for 30,000 years. I really don't understand what the problem is, but um, we became obscene organizations. So uh, uh, this is 1990. John Fraunmeyer was the chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. I invited him. You can see it's text. She, her work is, in this case, text painted on the wall. Uh, I invited John Fraunmeyer to come to New York, take a look at the exhibition, and you know, see if we were really an obscene organization. Well, he, he, he refused. I guess he thought the story of Aunt Mandy, who died from an illegal abortion, would melt his eyeballs. I don't know what his problem was. Anyway, um, Karen Finley's show, uh, the opening went by without incident, but then um, after the opening, somebody called up the fire department and claimed we were an illegal social club. Uh, we were closed by the New York City Fire Department uh, because the audience had to exit past the boiler room. There, of course, they'd been doing this for 17 years, but um, uh, suddenly we were we were not meeting the fire code. Um, we were audited subsequently by everyone, um, Internal Revenue Service, New York State Comptroller, and the National Endowment for the Arts itself. Um, it was the culture wars. We're in the you know we're in the moment when. Um, Obscene art was not an oxymoron, uh, but I, you know, didn't learn my lesson. And the next year, I presented Scarlet O at Judson Memorial Church. We, you know, the performance space was closed, so Franklin Furness went into exile. We started performing in other people's spaces. Uh, Scarlet O asks, she comes out dressed as a man and wonders what it would be like to have a penis. Anyway, then she starts to play with image. How do you? How do you manipulate your image so that the, the audience, in other words, the people who are walking up and down the street, uh, think you are somebody else? Um, so she dresses a, as a prostitute, and she takes us through all the steps. This is what you have to wear. You get the shoes here on 14th Street. You get the dress. Oh, yeah, you get that on 14th Street. And the wig, yeah, that comes 14, from 14th Street, too. <laughs> so she, she puts on her guise as a, a prostitute. Then she's... Um, going through a scenario, she's pretending to be this person, but she's stepping in and out of the character and, and asking us, well, if you saw me on 10th Avenue and 42nd Street, would you think I was a prostitute? And the audience says, yes. She says, oh, me too. And she steps back into her scenario that she's creating. Um, so this tape played for the National Council on the Arts. This is the body that oversees the National Endowment for the Arts in Washington. Um, the, the chairman of, of the National Endowment for the Arts, John Fraunmeyer, who had been an attorney, felt that because somebody from the audience was asked to come forward and break the fourth wall and rub lotion on Scarlett O's thigh, that uh, this behavior could be considered soliciting in many districts. Those are his thoughts. Um, so Franklin Furness, subsequent to Scarlett O's performance, was the grant that the peer panel had awarded was rescinded by the National Council uh, for the next year. Um, but we still didn't learn our lesson. And so in 1996, we mounted a 20th anniversary exhibition called Voyeur's Delight about the power of looking. Uh, and got in trouble yet again. Um, there, were, there was a group in Washington called the Christian Action Network. Uh, they, they filled two coffins with 
uh, flyers, one calling for the death of Franklin Furness, and the other one calling for the death of the National Endowment for the Arts. And then they dressed up a guy as the Grim Reaper, and then they started to carry these coffins up the steps of the Capitol building. Uh, the National Guardsman came down the steps and he said, you can only carry one coffin. I, I don't know which coffin was carried up the steps, but I, I thought it was interesting that um, the tactics used by performance artists would be used against us at that moment by the right, by the religious right. Um, this is serious art. This is not pornography. This is a work by Jocelyn Taylor called Something Private. Uh, you can see that the installation consists of monitors in the floor. Um, when you look close, you, you realize that, of course, the monitors, if, if they could see, could look up your dress. And we are looking up her snatch when we look down into the monitors. She has a speculum in her vagina. And, we're, we're looking inside. Um, it was uh, right at this time, this is 1996, fall of 1996, um, Franklin Furness was thinking about, as we, we gotten in trouble so many times, where is there going to be freedom of expression for artists? Where can we offer artists a free zone? Uh, this is our 20th anniversary show, the last show in this space before we decided to go virtual. It's called In the Flow, and it's about how authoring strategies had changed in the last couple of decades from um, the sole, individual, unique, magisterial artist on the top of the pyramid here deciding what the art should be to a much more liquid situation in which the artist collaborates with the public um, uh, or interacts with the public in some fashion. Um, our art changed from solid to liquid during the last couple of decades, and Franklin Furness was in the forefront of helping that change to take place. So we, we thought uh, cyberspace, we're going to go into cyberspace. This is the place where artists will have freedom of expression. Uh, but we learned our lesson by getting in trouble so many times. So now you can see Jocelyn Taylor's work on Franklin Furness's website in a, in a section called UBD Judge, where we also solicit your opinions. Um, but the image is accompanied by the artist statement, so you can't anymore divorce, just take, you know, you can't anymore consider the image to be obscene because why Jocelyn Taylor has a speculum up her vagina is explained in the, in the work. Um, so we decided to go virtual to present the work we were doing to a worldwide audience. Uh, this was a really bumpy process. The, the way we did that was to collaborate with a for-profit company uh, that was doing netcasting. They, this is pseudo.com. Their loft was in lower Manhattan also in the corner of Broadway and Houston. And they had started out doing internet radio and they had wanted to then get into doing television on the internet. But uh, in this slide you can see there are monitors. Those are chat stations where people are sending in their comments uh, by email and the artist in this case, Anna Mosby Coleman, is reading what is coming, the words that are coming through the chat lines, uh, singing. She's, she's reading, but also singing the words that are coming in through the chat lines. Um, the reason she has a t-shirt on her head is that the image you see, this is really early, this is 1998, um, is very small. The, the image on the computer is too two inches by one and a half inches, very small, kind of chunky, you know, the images jumping around. Um, the technology was poor, so the artists, uh, they weren't really deterred 